What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So I've kind of gotten a little bit of my setup back together. I want to talk today about the latest Suffolk poll talking, um, giving us some results on Iowa, which is incredibly important. Um, actually, I've been, I've been, I've been thinking. I've been thinking it's time to, it's time to hit the road. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, according to the latest poll, it looks like. Uh, Senator Harris is now tied with our boy Andrew Yang, and that is leading her to do some pretty erratic things, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm actually looking here at this uh, piece from Vanity Fair, and then the poll data, and then some interesting results that have come out of it. So Joe Biden is slipping. Uh, he's now at like 26% support, um, followed by Warren at, I believe, 17. Then we have Sanders at 13 followed by Mayor Pete at 10. So uh, a little bit different than what we're used to right now, uh, especially considering Pete has hidden 10%. But then it gets a little bit more interesting as you get to the next, uh, we'll say next tier of the field, where you got Tulsi Gabbard sliding in at four. What? Tulsi, who didn't make the last debate, or the, the prior debate, is, is at 4%. Ahead of Harris and Yang, who are tied at 3%. It's not necessarily the numbers here, but the shift in the field and where people are falling. Biden's slipping down to 26, I mean, that definitely leaves things open. Obviously, the chasm between Warren and Sanders is not that great, so between 17 and 13. If Biden continues to slip, that gives either one of them a chance to move up quite a bit. But again, most notably here is Harris now tied with Andrew Yang, who, you know, is a candidate she's kind of disregarded, laughed at even. Yeah, I, I remember her laughing at his interesting ideas at one point, and now she's neck and neck with him. And her response to this is quite interesting. The Iowa caucus is only a few months away. Her poll number is not improving. Senator Harris's 2020 campaign is changing course. Her campaign manager, Juan Rodriguez, sent a memo to staffers Wednesday informing them of a wide-scale restructuring coming to the campaign, including laying off aides, shuffling staffers to Iowa, and having consultants and Rodriguez himself take a pay cut. In a field of 18 candidates, we have faced an incredibly competitive resource environment, Rodriguez said in the memo, which was first reported by Politico, to effectively compete with the top campaign to make the necessary investments in the critical final 100 days to the caucus we need to reduce expenditures elsewhere and realign resources. So basically, she's in panic mode right now, uh, which is which is interesting. You know, we've all kind of been watching Yang's campaign and seeing what he's done, and it seems that you know he's logically putting all his resources into Iowa, uh, or at least those those early states, and that's what Harris is about to do. The Harris campaign plans to reduce the size of our headquarters staff in Baltimore. Rodriguez memo said, as well as move staffers from Baltimore, New Hampshire, Nevada and Harris's home state of California to Iowa as the campaign aggressively focuses its efforts on the state ahead of the February 3rd caucus. So no, that's definitely going to be interesting. If she's going to move all of those resources to Iowa, uh, and, and considering you know Yang has now made a, a push to start um, investing in media, in, in paid media, decisions were difficult, but will ensure a campaign is positioned to execute a robust Iowa ground game and a minimum seven-figure paid media campaign in the weeks leading up to the caucus should be interesting. But most interestingly, I, I think about Harris particularly is, you know, she doesn't really have much to offer. So uh, to me, it kind of looks like this is her last-ditch effort. Like if she, if she doesn't do well, in Iowa, that, that kind of might be it for her. Doing well in Iowa for her is probably a little bit different than everybody else. It's, she probably has to poll at 10% or, or higher, you know, just to really seem legitimate. I mean, she's got some big money back in her, so coming in at 3% probably isn't gonna cut it for her. But there are some other interesting findings from this, and that's also kind of what I wanna talk about. Okay, the Democratic field has set records for size, but almost one in five Democrats, 18%, said they wish someone else would jump into the race. Now, I've been saying for the longest, I think this field is particularly weak uh, or is not particularly strong, if that's a better way to say it. Um, and this is kind of reaffirming that. I mean, if you have nearly 20% of the, uh, the people <laughs> saying that they wish somebody else would join, that's not good. Um, but it also means that they're open. And this is obviously an opportunity for Yang, who 
is technically a political outsider, definitely has a chance to make some headway. And that's kind of why I was thinking, like, I, I might want to, I might want to swing out to Iowa. Uh, in response to an open-ended question about who they'd want to join, 10% identified former First Lady Michelle Obama. 7% said former New York Mayor uh, Bloomberg. 4% said Hillary Clinton. Clinton's name keeps popping up. It's, it's kind of crazy. But also, in a matchup between President Trump and an unnamed Democratic nominee, Trump narrowly led 41 to 39%, with 10% supporting an unnamed third-party candidate. Another 10% were undecided. That was a shift, albeit one with the margin of error, from the August survey when the unnamed Democratic uh, held a narrow lead over Trump. So now we see things are starting to swing back the other way. You know, when you have a weak field and you have a bunch of undecided voters and you don't really have, you know, you know people just aren't overwhelmed with what you have already, now people are starting to consider, hey, maybe Trump isn't the worst option. It's still wide open. This is definitely good news. Uh, it just means that, you know, with the right strategy and, you know, continuing to get the name out there, Yang can definitely do some damage in Iowa. In a new poll, Republicans expressed overwhelming confidence about the outcome of the election, with 86% predicting the president would win. 75% uh, of Democrats said their nominee would win, but independently, by a double-digit margin, expected Trump to prevail. Independence, I'm sorry. Independence by a double-digit margin expected Trump to prevail. So, again, I don't know why everyone keeps... No, it's not everyone. There is this notion uh, among Democrats that... Everybody just wants Trump out and he has no chance and it's definitely over for him. I don't know where that's coming from, man. I, I, I feel like you know, if independents are saying by a double-digit margin they expect Trump to win, that's Iowa, but you know, still. I mean, and then if you look at uh, the difference between Republicans feeling that, that Trump is going to win versus 75% of Democrats, I mean, it's 10%, man. Republicans are more confident than, than Democrats are about who's going to win this election. So... Um, to me, all that really means that this thing is still extremely wide open. Harris is not doing well, but if she allocates that much of her resources to the state of Iowa, that's definitely going to help her. So um, we'll really just have to see how Yang, uh, how Yang responds. Yeah, man, I just wanted to get the news out, let you guys know what's up, and, and hopefully uh, we, we see a good, strong response from Andrew Yang. It, it, again, it does make me slightly nervous that she's going to move all of those resources into Iowa because uh, I don't know if we can overcome that. She's feeling threatened by her position. And Andrew Yang is on her heels. So if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next one.